What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. In today's video, I shall be showing you the results that I got when performing a number of benchmarking tests on the 2021 entry 14 inch MacBook Pro. We are on the road to 5,000 subscribers and if you are new around here, I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when I upload any of my future videos. Without any further ado, Let's hit the titles. The first benchmarking application which I ran on this MacBook Pro was Geekbench 4. Now this was run through Rosetta as it's not available natively through macOS. Geekbench is good as it runs several different tests and algorithms and depending on how it's performed and how long it took to perform them, it will then give a score accordingly. So for this test, I got single core scores of 6,055 and multi-core scores of 28,000 I also performed Geekbench 4's graphics test using the GPU found in the M1 Pro system on a chip. It is worth noting that this MacBook Pro has 14 graphics cores and not the 16 that we see in other models. So the first of these graphics tests that I ran was their OpenGL test and for this test I got scores of 146,737 and when running the metal test I got scores of 128,416. Once again these tests were run through Rosetta. The next benchmark Marking application which I ran was once again from Geekbench, however this time the newer set of tests found in Geekbench 5. So this has an increased amount of tests which are designed to further tax the machine when compared to Geekbench 4. So there are two versions of Geekbench 5, there is a native version and a version running through Rosetta. So this version is running through Rosetta. Once again, the Geekbench 5 scores are based on performance and time taken. When testing the CPU performance through Rosetta, I got single core scores of 1,323. And when testing the multi-core performance, I got scores of 7,600. Again, I tested how the M1 Pro's graphics performed here once again through Rosetta using OpenGL and Metal. So when running the OpenGL test, I got scores of 31,713. And when running this test through Metal, I got a score of 37,412. I then set out and ran the native version of Geekbench 5 on this M1 Pro enabled MacBook Pro. This test will also test out what the performance would be equivalent to if this was an Intel based CPU. Now the single core scores that I got for this was 1353, whereas the multi-core scores when testing it as though it was an Intel based CPU was 7777. I then ran the same set of tests but this time testing out the performance of those CPU cores found within this M1 Pro. For this test, I got CPU single core scores of 1,759 and multi-core scores of 9,846. And when testing how well those 14 graphics cores performed, I got OpenGL scores of 34,096. And when running this test through Metal, I got scores of 40,679. It is quite interesting to see the difference in performance comparing the M1 devices to the M1 Pro found in this MacBook Pro. Those additional CPU performance cores, along with those additional graphics cores, seemingly are are having a profound impact here. The next benchmarking application which I ran on this MacBook Pro was GFX Bench Metal, which is once again designed to test out the performance of how these 14 graphical cores perform when running graphics through Metal. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests which are performed both on and off screen at higher and lower levels of intensity. Now for this, I have calculated the average across the categories, but as always, I will show you each individual result. For the higher graphically intense tasks, I got a frame rate of 323.13 frames per second, whereas for the lower, I got a score of 285 
1.74 frames per second. The next test I ran was an SSD speed test. This test was run through Rosetta, although it's just an SSD speed test, so it shouldn't make any difference in the results that we see. So after running this test multiple times, the fastest I got was a read speed of 5,254.8 megabytes per second and a write speed of 3,729.1 megabytes per second. I then ran Novabench. Now Novabench is a good general benchmark as it tests not only the CPU and GPU, but also the storage and system memory. It is also worth noting that this test was run through Rosetta. Now the scores that I got here was 2,465. Next, I run a network speed test. Now it is worth noting that I am paying for a 200 megabits per second connection. And when testing the download speeds on this MacBook Pro, I got download speeds of 345 megabits per second and upload speeds of 35.9 megabits per second. It is worth noting that when I ran the Google speed test, I got considerably lower download speeds. So I'm not sure why the reason is that I'm getting higher speeds, but as I say, these are the speeds that I got. Next, I ran Cinebench. Cinebench is a good benchmarking program as it tests each individual CPU thread and then similarly to how Geekbench gives its scores based on performance and time taken to complete tasks, it runs tests for both single and multi-core performance and then works out a ratio between the two. The higher the ratio, the better the CPU. So for this test, I got single core speeds of 1,526 and multi-core speeds of 9,528, giving us a ratio of 6.24. I then ran the V-Ray CPU hardware render test, and on this front, I got a score of 5,944. I then ran the Octane X 3D modeling suite, expecting some impressive completion times, thanks to the Apple Silicon optimization. And sure enough, we see that it took just over 15 minutes to complete, which is almost two times as fast as the M1. The next 3D rendering software I ran was Blender and the first test I ran was the classroom test and while rendering using the CPU it took around 715 seconds to complete and when using the 14 core GPU to render the scene it took 213 seconds which is an impressive jump in the time taken. I also ran the BMW test on Blender and when rendering using the CPU it took 330 seconds to complete the render but what's impressive, I did the same thing using the GPU to render and it took 91 seconds to complete. I then ran the Shadow of a Tomb Raider benchmark at both 2560 by 1600 and at 1920 by 1200. For the higher resolution, I managed a render of 4810 frames with an average frame rate of 30 and when rendering this at 1920 by 1200, it managed to render 7,547 frames with an average frame rate of 48 frames per second. Which whilst isn't crazy good for a gaming laptop, for a laptop with this footprint and power draw, it's extremely impressive. Next, I did a timed export with Final Cut Pro, exporting a five minute, 24 second video file to H.264 at both full HD 1920 by 1080 and 4K 3840 by 2160. Now it is worth noting that I did turn off background rendering when running this particular test. So the HD export came in faster as expected, coming in at two minutes and nine seconds, while the 4K project completed its export in two minutes and 38 seconds. The last series of tests that I performed came from Unigen, which are not optimized for Apple Silicon and thus will be run through Rosetta. The first of these was their Heaven benchmarking test, which is a heavy CPU and GPU test, which will give a general score based on its performance and then an average frame rate for when rendering out a particular scene. So for this scene, I got an average frame rate of 93.6 frames per second and a score of 2,357. Once again, from Unigen benchmarking tools, I performed their Valley test, which performs a similar set of tests to the previous one. Now for when rendering out this scene, I got a frame rate of 79.6 frames per second and a score of 3,350. 
and 30. So there you have it. Take from this video what you must, but it's quite good to see machines with this display, design, power efficiency and performance for this price. So if you want to run some of the tests that you've seen in this video and compare them to your own machines, then go ahead and do so and let me know how your machines stack up to this MacBook Pro. If you have got any questions with anything you've seen in this video, then be sure to let me know by commenting down below or by hitting me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in this video's description if you are new around here then do please take a moment to subscribe clicking the bell to be notified of when a new video goes live once again thank you very much for watching take care and have a good one